Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel, Dr. Shravani's Med Concepts for Easy Learning. We'll be discussing on cellular responses to stress and adaptations. What is homeostasis? A cell is able to handle physiological demands maintaining a healthy steady state called homeostasis. This is a normal cell. When there is increased demand or stress, how a cell is going to react to that stress? When a normal cell is subjected to increased functional demand, what happens is it undergoes cellular adaptations. When the same cell when it is subjected to mild stress, it goes for reversible form of cell injury. So as the name indicates, reversible form of cell injury, once the stimulus is removed, that is the stress is removed, it reverts back to the normal condition. That's why it is known as reversible form of cell injury. Here you are able to see fatty change which is a form of reversible form of cell injury. The same cell when it is subjected to severe stress and that too for too much amount of time, it will go for irreversible form of cell injury or cell death by necrosis and apoptosis. Cellular adaptations. Adaptations or reversible changes in terms of size, number, phenotype, metabolic activity or functions of the cells in response to changes in their environment. Here you will be able to see normal cell. How this cell is able to cope up the stress by increasing in size, number, phenotype and metabolic activity that is cellular adaptation. In terms of size, so the size can be increased or decreased. When it is increased, we will call it as hypertrophy. When the size is decreased, we will call it as atrophy. Trophy is size. Hyper means increased. Atrophy means decrease in size. In terms of number, the cell can accommodate the new environment by increasing its number. That is known as hyperplasia. That is increased number. Or it can also accommodate by changing in its cell phenotype that is known as metaplasia. Hypertrophy. Hypertrophy is an increase in the size of the cells that results in an increase in the size of the affected organ. Trophy means size, hyper means increased. So increase in size is hypertrophy. Hypertrophied organ has no new cells, just larger cells. Because of the increased size of the cells, the size of the organ is increased. It occurs in non-dividing cells such as cardiac muscle and skeletal muscle. These two muscles, they don't have the capacity of division. They are permanent cells. That's why they increase the size of the organ only by increasing its size, not by number. Whereas smooth muscle which has the capacity to replicate, it increases its size both by hypertrophy as well as hyperplasia. Coming to the types of hypertrophy, there are two types, physiological hypertrophy and Pathological hypertrophy. What is physiological hypertrophy? Hypertrophy occurring in physiological conditions. Best example is breast hypertrophy. During pregnancy and lactation, what happens to the breast size? It increases. Why? To cope up with the increased milk production, the lactiferous ducts undergoes hypertrophy. So, this is the best example of physiological hypertrophy. Next example of physiological hypertrophy is uterus during pregnancy. To accommodate the fetus, it has to increase the size and the two smooth muscles present in the uterus increases its size to accommodate the newly forming fetus. So this is the best example of hypertrophy of uterus during pregnancy. Next example is hypertrophy of skeletal muscle in athletes. In athletes, they will overuse the muscles. In muscle builders, they will overuse the deltoid muscle. That's why there is hypertrophy of the deltoid muscle. Coming to the next side, that is pathological hypertrophy. The name itself indicates pathological hypertrophy means some pathology is there. Here the pathology is hypertension. So when there is systemic hypertension, what happens is the left ventricle has to pump blood with more increased pressure. That's why there is left ventricular hypertrophy in hypertensive heart disease. What is the mechanism of hypertrophy? 
ultimate mechanism of hypertrophy is there is increased protein production causing increased growth. So, why is that protein production? It is under the stimulus of growth factors and agonists which acts on the cell. It causes the increased transcription factors like GATA4, NFAT, MEF2 which causes further increased RNA and proteins thereby causing increased growth. Next cellular adaptation is atrophy. What is atrophy? Atrophy is defined as decrease in size of organ or tissue due to decrease in cell size and number. There are various causes of atrophy. We will learn in detail one by one. During fetal development, there is atrophy of thyroglossal duct during development of fetus. Next example is adult life. In the uh, fetal life uh, or uh, in the childhood you will see thymus but once we grow into adult we will not have thymus. What happened to our thymus? It got atrophied. Next example is disuse atrophy. Best example of disuse atrophy is immobilization in a plaster cast after fracture. So, after fracture if there is cast for long period of time and no mobilization of that limb the muscle there undergoes atrophy. Other example of uh, uh, other example is denervation atrophy. Denervation atrophy means there is lack of loss of nerve supply. So, in poliomyelitis what is happening? There is damage to the nerves by poliovirus. So, when nerve is damaged what happens? No stimulation to the muscle by nerve that is why there is muscle atrophy. Coming to ischemic atrophy. So, there is lack of blood supply to the muscle causing ischemic atrophy. Senile atrophy is best example of ischemic atrophy. Endocrine stimulation loss. Endocrine dependent organs will be there. So, they are entirely dependent on endocrine stimulation. When there is no endocrine stimulation, that organ will undergo atrophy. One such example is uterus. In postmenopausal women, no estrogen. So, because of that, there is atrophy of endometrium as well as uterus, which is best example of endocrine stimulation loss. Coming to pressure atrophy. What is pressure atrophy? Some a tumor is causing compression on the adjacent tissue causing com, uh, pressure atrophy is best example. Inadequate nutrition, in inadequate nutrition it causes systemic atrophy, more number of muscles are involved here, the condition called cachexia, when there is inadequate nutrition it is known as cachexia which causes generalized muscle wasting due to poor diet. What are the various mechanisms of atrophy? There are three mechanisms. There is decreased protein synthesis, increased protein degradation and increased autophagy. What happens in decreased protein synthesis? Cells produce less amount of protein leading to reduced cellular mass. What is autophagy? Cells initiate self-eating processes to recycle the cellular components and increased protein degradation is mainly the by the ubiquitin proteasome pathway. Hyperplasia. What is hyperplasia? Hyper means increase. Plasia is increase in number. Hyperplasia is defined as increase in number of cells in an organ or tissue in response to a stimulus. In which organs does it occur? Hypertrophy occurs in the cells which are not capable of division like cardiac muscle and skeletal muscle whereas hyperplasia occurs in organs only which have the capacity of division. And it occurs often with hypertrophy and both are triggered by the same stimulus. So, cardiac muscle, skeletal muscle undergoes only hypertrophy whereas smooth muscle which is capable of dividing undergoes both hypertrophy as well as hyperplasia. It can be physiological or pathological. Pathological hyperplasia constitutes a fertile soil in which cancerous proliferations may eventually arise. That is why we have to detect pathological hyperplasia at early stages so that we can prevent cancer. So, there are two types of hyperplasia physiological and pathological coming to physiological hyperplasia. So, physiological means it occurs in the normal physiological conditions. Best example of physiological hyperplasia is hormonal hyperplasia and compensatory hyperplasia. What is hormonal hyperplasia? There is proliferation of glandular epithelium of the female breast at puberty and during pregnancy. So, breast physiological hyperplasia in lactation and pregnancy is best example of hormonal hyperplasia. Next coming to compensatory hyperplasia. Compensatory hyperplasia is when a portion of liver is partially resected what happens that part is completely replaced by the re remaining cells by multiplying and the liver retain its original weight. So, here you can see the hyperplasia of the hepatocytes replacing the entire lost liver. 
Stem cell proliferation that is bone marrow hyperplasia is also another example of physiological hyperplasia. And sometimes during infection what happens we should have more lymphocytes to fight against the infection. In that process there is lymphoid hyperplasia that is also another example of physiological hyperplasia. Next type of hyperplasia is pathological hyperplasia. It occurs due to excessive or inappropriate actions of growth hormones or growth factors on target cell. Pathological hyperplasia constitutes a fertile soil for cancerous proliferations to occur. Best example of pathological hyperplasia is endometrial hyperplasia. So, this is a uterus, the inner lining of the endometrium, it undergoes hyperplasia under the influence of estrogen. More estrogen, more endometrial hyperplasia. So, here you can see the endometrial hyperplasia. Other example of pathological hyperplasia is benign prostatic hyperplasia. In elderly men, what happens is the prostate gets enlarged causing benign prostatic hyperplasia as shown here because of which there will be uretric obstruction and this is the histology of benign prostatic hyperplasia. Another example of pathological hyperplasia is HPV causing hyperplasia where it causes wart formation. What are the various mechanisms of hyperplasia? Under the influence of growth factors either mature cells proliferate increase in number causing hyperplasia. Another mechanism is there will be tissue stem cells among these mature cells. So, they proliferate and give rise to new cells. Metaplasia. What is metaplasia? It is a reversible cellular adaptation in which one differentiator or adult cell type that is it can be epithelial tissue or mesenchymal tissue is replaced by another cell type. Why this metaplasia is occurring? Due to chronic inflammation or irritation and it represents a survival mechanism to withstand adverse conditions. Metaplasia is always reversible after the removal of stress. Influences that predispose to metaplasia if they are persistent and we are not going to correct it, it can initiate malignant transformation especially in epithelial type of metaplasia. The two types of metaplasia, epithelial metaplasia and connective tissue metaplasia. Epithelial metaplasia. It is conversion of one type of epithelium into another type of epithelium. The two types of epithelial metaplasia, one is squamous metaplasia and columnar metaplasia. What is squamous metaplasia is, it is conversion of columnar epithelium into squamous epithelium. So, the ultimately epithelium getting formed here is squamous epithelium, that is why it is squamous metaplasia. In columnar metaplasia, it is conversion of squamous epithelium into columnar epithelium. The finally formed epithelium is columnar epithelium. That is why it is known as columnar metaplasia. Examples of squamous metaplasia are chronic smokers. In chronic smokers because of smoke what happens is there is conversion of columnar epithelium in the trachea and bronchi to the squamous epithelium. Calculi formation in pancreatic duct is also example of squamous metaplasia. Vitamin A deficiency leading to squamous metaplasia in respiratory tract and cornea. In cervix, because of human papilloma virus infection, there is squamous metaplasia. Coming to columnar metaplasia, examples of columnar metaplasia are Barrett's esophagitis and gastric intestinal metaplasia. Squamous metaplasia. It is conversion of columnar epithelium into squamous type of epithelium. Best example is cigarette smoking. In cigarette smoke, there are lot of toxins which damages the pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium of trachea and bronchus. So, to overcome that stress, the epithelium that is pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium is replaced by squamous epithelium. Next example is HPV induced Met squamous metaplasia in cervix. So, when there is human papilloma virus infection in cervix, the endocervix which is lined by the columnar epithelium is replaced by the squamous epithelium. Other example is vitamin A deficiency. Because of vitamin A deficiency, what happens is the pseudostratified columnar epithelium of respiratory tract and cornea normal epithelium is replaced by the squamous epithelium. 
Coming to the calculi formation, in case of excreted duct of salivary glands or pancreas or bile duct, so whenever there is cal calculi formation, that means a stone formation in these ducts, what happens is to overcome that stress, the secretory columnar epithelium is replaced by squamous epithelium. Columnar metaplasia. What is columnar metaplasia is conversion of squamous type of epithelium into columnar type is known as columnar metaplasia. And best example of columnar metaplasia is Barrett's esophagitis. Before going in detail about Barrett's esophagitis, first we should know about GERD. What is GERD is gastroesophageal reflex disease. It is nothing but reflex of acid from the stomach into the esophagus. Normally, the lining of esophagus is squamous epithelium. So, because of the repeated reflex of acid, this squamous epithelium is converted into the columnar epithelium. Here you can see the Barrett's esophagus where the squamous epithelium is replaced by the columnar epithelium. So, esophageal squamous epithelium is replaced by intestinal like columnar epithelium under the influence of reflexed gastric acid. And why is it important is it carries increased risk for adenocarcinoma. Normally in esophagus we will get squamous cell carcinoma as a normal lining is squamous type of epithelium. But if you see adenocarcinoma definitely in the background you should search for Barrett's esophagitis. So here you can see the Barrett's esophagitis progressing to adenocarcinoma stepwise. Another example of columnar metaplasia is gastric intestinal metaplasia. In this Gastric type of epithelium is replaced by intestinal type of epithelium and the risk factors associated with this type of metaplasia are H. pylori that is helicobacter pylori infection, autoimmune gastritis and smoking. Connective tissue metaplasia. It is the formation of cartilage, bone or adipocytes. All these are the mesenchymal tissues. In tissues that normally do not contain these elements. Best example of connective tissue metaplasia is myositis ossificans. Sometimes there is, if there is skeletal muscle injury, what happens is for longer duration, there is bone formation in the injured muscle. So, that muscle is getting transformed into bone. So, one mesenchymal tissue into another mesenchymal tissue. That is known as myositis ossificans. Other, other examples of connective tissue metaplasia or osseous metaplasia, cartilaginous metaplasia, myeloid metaplasia and myxoid metaplasia. Connective tissue metaplasia. What is connective tissue metaplasia? It is a formation of cartilage, bone or adipocytes. All these are the mesenchymal tissues. These are transformed or formed in tissues that normally do not contain these elements. Best example is myositis ossificans. Normally in the muscle tissue you will not see bone but in myositis ossificans there is injury to the muscle wherein there is stimulation of bone formation. So, one differentiated mesenchymal tissue that is muscle is getting transformed into another differentiated type of mesenchymal tissue that is bone. That is why it is known as myositis ossificans. Other examples of connective tissue metaplasia are osseous metaplasia, cartilaginous metaplasia, myeloid metaplasia and myxoid metaplasia. What is the mechanism of metaplasia? Metaplasia does not result from a change in the phenotype of an already differentiated cell type. It rather results from either reprogramming of local tissue stem cells or alternatively colonization by differentiated cell populations from adjacent sites. Confused? Let me explain you with the diagrams. So, when there is chronic irritation or inflammation, what happens is there is release of cytokines, growth factors and extracellular matrix components. So, because of this, what happens is, so there is a stem cell, there is reprogramming of the stem cell, thereby converting a normal epithelium into the metaplastic epithelium. Another mechanism by which metaplasia occurs is colonization by different cell populations leading to metaplasia. As you can see here, you can see the blue cells which are migrating towards the native tissue that is a pink cell and getting transformed into the metaplastic cells shown in the yellow color. So, this is the mechanism of metaplasia. With this, I will close the video and I hope it was useful to you and keep tuned to my channel for more updates. Thank you.